Good afternoon. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, hello. Look at those voices. I remember. It felt like we've we've been apart so long. How you doing, Mr. Evan? Pretty good. Hello, Miss Miranda. Hello, how are you? I am well. That's good. Did I see Dr. Ruiz on there? I thought, I thought I was going to be able to get away <laughs> the, and, and sneak in and crawl out, but you caught me. How you doing, my brother? How you doing? Hey, Dr. Ruiz. Yeah. We're not going to bother you. All right. Anybody wants to let us hear their voices, uh, you can take your phone off. Uh-oh. <laughs> if anybody wants to say hello uh, good afternoon you guys can take your phone off mute but if not uh, if you do have background noise let's make sure we keep our phones on mute good to see you again and congratulations on that beautiful baby oh thank you so much <laughs> I, I, do I look sleepy <laughs> I'm hanging in here <laughs> All right. So just we'll just good we'll afternoon, knock out. Everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Emmanuel. Hello. Hey. You guys are all back. The gang is back again. All right. So um, we'll just do uh, some quick housekeeping, uh, everyone. So for those that have been with us over the summer as we transition to the fall, welcome back. Uh, nice to, to see your faces and hear your voices and, and see your names here. Um, we hope that you had a, a wonderful August. Uh, we know that it's been a very uh, challenging time over the last, you know, four, five, six months for you. So I do thank you once again for taking your time out um, to, to come and learn and grow with us here uh, on another Wednesday night session. Um, with that being said, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping is if you have background noise, uh, please do uh, keep your phones on mute, but we do want to hear your voices at times throughout the presentation, so uh, please just take them off mute if you, if you want your voice heard. Uh, we do encourage participation uh, via speaking up. Uh, we have the Q&A feature. Uh, we have the chat feature, which we'll be using uh, early on here. Um, and then also there will be a couple, um, I think we have two or three polls that we'll be having for you and we definitely want your participation there as well. Um, the, for those that, have, that are here for the first time, all of these features are very easy to use, very self-explanatory uh, on your phone and your computer or tablet if that's what you're using. Um, as stated, we want your participation. Uh, we have a wonderful speaker for you tonight, a wonderful session, uh, very timely very timely session, uh, we believe as well. And so we definitely want your energy. Um, and if you, you give it to us, we'll make sure our, our wonderful speaker tonight, he'll, he'll provide it back to you. So we'll go ahead and get started here, guys. Uh, we're gonna put up our first poll. There'll be two polls and then one uh, question that we'll answer in the chat feature. So if you guys don't mind giving us your feedback here, uh, how satisfied are you with your study habits or academic performance? Be honest with us. <laughs> there's no, there's no punishment <laughs> for your answer. All right, our percentages are moving up. We're about a third, almost halfway. More votes are coming in. All right. Okay, we'll, we'll go to um, our next question. Um, 
Dr. R, um, or Dayfield, do you have, were you able to collect some of that, that information there? Oh, sorry. Yep, I got it. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, we have one more for you here for a poll. What would you change um, about uh, your study habits? Um, select all that apply. Actually, Deb, this was the one we were putting in the chat feature, correct? Nope, that's the next one, Brian. The next one. Sorry about that. Uh, what would you change about your study habits? Uh, and you can do uh, multiple selections on this one. All right, it's really good participation. Mm. Nice split. All right, and on the last one, uh, we would like for you actually to use the chat feature. So if you don't mind, uh, when you answer the next one, uh, please answer in the chat box on the last question here. And that question is, what is one thing that you would like to learn from the study skills for academic success session tonight. I know you're you're not exactly sure all the details of what we'll be covering, but what is one thing that, um, given the topic of study skills for academic success, what is one thing that you would like to learn? And um, Dr. Ardafio, are you able to see um, inside the chat feature right now? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. That's very helpful. <laughs> I love that answer, Evan. <laughs> Evan says, whatever there is to learn. <laughs> Bring it on. Oh, what a wonderful question. How and when to take breaks? Deb, yeah, there is one question in here that I would like for us to put to the side. It says, I'd like to learn more about the LSAMP OSU. I am a transfer student from the Tri-City Cleveland. Oh, absolutely. I can connect you with that. Jessica, I'll go ahead and I'll chat with you on that. I can connect you with your coordinator. All right. Looks like uh, Dr. Ardafio, one of your um, popular questions is uh, how to make studying more effective. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so thank you guys so much uh, for your feedback there. Um, Dr. Adafio, you feel like you, you got enough information there from the responses? Uh, yes, sir, that's wonderful, thank you so much. All right, well guys, uh, without further ado, uh, I'd like to welcome you, uh, Dr. Paul uh, Ardafio. He is um, going to be our guest speaker for the night, our first speaker um, of the fall series. So no pressure, no pressure, sir, on you tonight. Uh, but you guys bring your positive energy and he's going to bring it back towards your way. So um, I'll be here in the background supporting you throughout the night. Dr. Ardafio, it's all yours, sir. All right. Thank you so much. And I am very excited to be here. Uh, let me just see how I can share my slides here. Um, give me one moment. Are you able to see? Yep, just uh, if you can go into presentation mode. All right. Awesome, beautiful. All right, excellent. So thank, thank you all. I'm, um, I'm really happy to be here and thank you, um, uh, Brian and Deb uh, for the uh, invitation and the opportunity to speak to uh, this 
wonderful group of uh, students. So please, um, this is meant to be a, a conversation. We're going to uh, try to uh, learn and interact with each other as much as possible and come out of here with some uh, tips and tricks and knowledge to be able to uh, better study, better learn, and better use our beautiful brains, all right? So um, let's uh, jump, jump right in. So I've put up a few uh, terms and a few things that we're, we're going to touch upon, but really this is just meant to be a teaser. So um, you have some uh, supplementary material that'll be a, a deep dive into a lot of these uh, topics. So uh, things like uh, metacognition and uh, space learning and retrieval practice and um, how your daily habits for success and preparing for exam or quiz. We'll, um, we'll do a deep dive. So you've got a, uh, a slide set of about uh, 80 slides that'll take you carefully through all of this. So if you miss anything, just jump right into those slides. Um, and you also have a couple PDFs that, are, that summarize um, all the material as well. So uh, why, the first thing we'll do is a, a bit of a pretest. So do, are any of these terms familiar to, to any of you? If, if any of these look familiar, if you know what any of these terms mean, um, please go ahead, Brian, can we uh, take a, a, a few, um, write, write it in the chat, and then if we can take a few live um, uh, uh, answers to the question. All right, if you uh, want to do the live answer, are you, are they able to select um, any of the uh, yeah. terms? Yeah, just any of them that, that are familiar with them. Okay. Familiar to them and that they want to uh, define or talk about. So if you, if you use the raise your hand feature, um, if you would like to share what your, uh, your definition and your thoughts are on any of these terms, please use the raise your hand feature. All right, uh, Mr. Emanuel. Hello, I'd say that uh, a term that I'm most familiar with on this list is the term metacognition, which is just you thinking about your learning and just your thought process in general. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, I have, uh, is that Irma? Yes, it is. So retrieval practice is being able to recall what you learned um, without any notes. That's what I know of retrieval practice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, is that Matita? Yes. Um, so spaced repetition or spaced or distributed learning is um, when you give a certain amount of time um, between studying, I guess you can say. It's just when you give space between um, different tasks. Okay. All right. Uh, Adrian? Uh, I'm going to define number seven, so recognition versus knowledge. Uh, recognition is, uh, the main difference is the level of understanding of whatever it is you are trying to uh, discuss. So, for example, recognition is you are not, 100% uh, sure of what the topic is, while knowledge is 100% uh, understanding or at least close thereof. Okay. All right, All right. we'll do one more. Uh, let's go with um, Sh uh, Shauna. Mindset is basically your attitudes or something. At least that's how I would define it. Okay. All right, back to you. Um, Dr. Artifail. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Those are um, those those are uh, uh, great uh, contributions and, and things to think about. So uh, within that within the the uh, slide set that you get and the summaries, you'll will uh, learn about all of these terms. But we'll again these are uh, uh, this is a bit of a teaser, but we'll we'll touch on on many of these topics. Okay. Um, so why am I here and why am I I doing this? So. Uh, by day, my day job is I'm a neurobiologist by training. I'm a neuroscientist, and my, my day job is uh, there's this one thing I'm very passionate about is uh, developing new medicines, um, uh, more effective, uh, safer, better uh, medicines and, and treatments and cures for 
um, serious and uh, life-threatening and dis disabling uh, uh, brain disorders uh, like uh, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, um, schizophrenia, psychiatric disorders, as well as neurodegenerative dis disorders. So um, I, I am, I am as, as a neuroscientist, I'm obviously very passionate about the brain and everything that the brain does, and not, not just uh, in disease. Uh, again, as I mentioned, that's my, my day job, is trying to um, improve the quality of life for individuals with uh, those uh, diseases and disorders. But um, also, this is the same organ, the, the, the brain, that is very important and obviously is, is the, the, the key uh, the key figure in our learning and memory and everything that we're doing for, for studying. So um, this is what I've, I've tried to compile here is um, evidence-based study uh, strategies, right? As a scientist, I, I look at data, right? Data is very important to me. So I don't like to just randomly, and I, I work with a lot of students and I train um, uh, graduate students, postdocs, medical students, pharmacy students, undergrads, and uh, many times, you know, students are always, you know, they're, they're, in, they're in school, they're taking um, uh, standardized tests, GREs, boards, um, MCATs, uh, all, the, all these different tests. And so I, uh, a lot of my working with so many students, I've seen a pattern and seen uh, many, many students that I, that I mentor or, or teach or, or train um, have, have had a lot of these issues that I'll, we'll talk about today. So my goal and my hope is to be able to, to help uh, students with a lot, with the uh, many of these same issues that are related to um, learning and memory. And it's not just at this level, even if you feel like you're doing great right now, um, these same uh, issues of, uh, occur and apply at the next level. So as a graduate student, as a medical student, as uh, whatever it is you do, postgraduate, um, uh, these uh, at, at some point um, you'll you'll hit that wall, that cognitive wall where things aren't as easy for you as they were at the previous level, and you'll have to uh, employ some new new uh, techniques because um, things get tougher. Okay, so here's um, here's you know I. I I get to work, it's really an honor, I get to work with really, really bright students and many of them have dreams. Many of the dreams you see here are for really, uh, for wonderful careers in STEM and um, either as scientists, engineers, physicians, nurses, so many, you know, cool uh, um, technology jobs out there and, um, and, and they come in very excited, right? And, and too often, uh, I, I see students um, that look like this on the left, right? When they, they thought they would, they would be this individual on the right. Um, let, let, let me take a moment to ask, has this ever happened to anyone? And, and, and would, you, would you be willing to share a, a brief story? Yep, use the uh, raise your hand feature and I'll call upon you. All right. Um, is that um, Adrian? Are you? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so funny enough, this actually happened this morning. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Perfect yeah, timing. That's, that's yeah. Timely. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Tell us more. I, it was my first. I'm a freshman in college, and mm -hmm. so it's a different experience. Uh, but I had my first uh, biology quiz. Mm -hmm. And I thought I understood the material well enough uh, on its own. Uh, I reviewed over, a, a, you know, overall of the key features that we were already hinted at uh, before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I entered into the t uh, into the quiz confident, thinking that I was going to perform well. Sadly, I, not so hot. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank, thanks for your for your honesty, and, and I, 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 I um, my my chuckle is not because it's funny. It's it's just the, the the recognition because it's 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 the the reason that that you know I put this together and work with so many students on this is because I, I hear this is something I hear day in day out. So, but we'll, hopefully this, um, I think if you implement and uh, go back to the, the, the your pre-reads um, uh, and, and take it to heart and work on this, I'm, I'm confident you can, can turn that around, but thanks for sharing your story. All 
right. Uh, would you like to do one more? Yeah, let's take one more. All right. Um, let's go with Megan. Um, mine was, funnily enough, actually last night as well. <laughs> okay. um, I So I just came back to college. I was gone for six years. I was mm -hmm. doing corporate retail, basically. Um, at the beginning of the year, before COVID, decided, hey, I'm going to go back, finish my biology degree. Mm -hmm. So I've taken a lot of the prerequisite stuff, so like basic biology, genetics, those kinds of things. But I went into this mammalogy test like, oh, yeah, I totally know what's going on. And it was just a lot more of some of the basic stuff mm -hmm. that I didn't even think to review. You know what I mean? Like basic stuff. Like we were going over, you know, one of them was literally the seven or eight steps for um, fertilization, right? Mm -hmm. And I was over here like, I am pretty sure I know how to do this, but I was so like confident because I had studied all of the other stuff that mm -hmm. I probably one out of every four, I think I probably got like a B, maybe even a C on it just because some of it was super basic, mm -hmm. very, very basic. And I'm like, I'm over here studying like exact terms. Like I know what's what, I know who's related, but then it wasn't exactly like it. Then when I was thinking about it, like compared to his quizzes, if I would have taken a look at his quizzes just a little bit more thoroughly to see how he had set them up, I would have kind of caught on to that probably. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you for that. And, and great examples, right? So, um, you know, this, you'll, you'll see this is an important part of, uh, of, of studying is being able to predict or being able to better predict um, what your what your um, professors or what your t instructors are looking for, right? Which is which is really important, and part of it is just actually sitting down to think about it, as well as they they you know your professors. You know, I I I don't teach as much now, but you know I, when when I did, um, students could easily you know predict what I'm going to ask on the test because um, I. I, I would give them t um, uh, teasers, right? Every practice uh, a quiz or an exam or questions that I'm giving them is giving, they're getting a clue as to what, what it is that I think is important, right? And your professors are, are the same. And, and sometimes you can just ask them too. Oftentimes you can just ask them. Okay, so um, this is, uh, so the, here, here are some of the things I see, right? So uh, many times students' dreams aren't realized because of poor academic performance. And the, the thing that's, that to me uh, that I hate to see is some of the, the best and brightest students that have a great capacity and absolutely um, have what it takes to have uh, excellent and outstanding careers in, in uh, STEM. Um, are, are taken out the game early on because of, of nothing other than, you know, not ha never having been taught how to study, right? Uh, exceptionally bright, definitely have the capacity, but uh, we're not taught how to study. So I see them, you know, taking the L in one of these, right? I think I heard, you know, uh, uh, biology um, uh, earlier, right? In many of these classes, but uh, obviously this list isn't exhaustive. It, it can be a, a number of classes. Um, so this this is an this is uh, an example of um, a, a student with a sim similar thing had really had come to me someone had referred to uh, referred her to me and um, uh, so Jackie was was uh, wanted to be a, um, a a physician scientist but had had given up um, essentially after failing um, you'll see in the in her. Uh, in, in the first, in uh, spring 2017, had gotten a, a, a D in, in or, organic too. And, and unfortunately, this isn't all that uncommon, something I, I see quite, quite often, right? And so we, you know, we worked, um, you know, utilizing uh, various study strategies. She completely turned this around. So you can see in, in spring 2018, um, took organic again, um, ended up with an A in it, not only uh, got an A in it, but was asked to come to TA um, the, the class. So the very class that she previously failed and uh, caused her to essentially, when I met her, she was, I had pretty much given up and said, you know, I'm, I'm not doing STEM. I can't do this. I'm not, you know, I'm not good at it. Um, ended up getting an A and I'm being asked to TA, TA the course 
um, uh, in the future and then ended up getting one of the um, highest uh, uh, graduating with a chemistry degree and uh, with uh, one of the highest um, grades as well as receiving um, the departmental um, award for the top student. Right. And so this is from a student that said, I can't do chemistry and I'm not doing, I'm, I'm out of STEM. So, and she's currently in, in uh, medical school uh, and continuing on in, in STEM as well, doing uh, research. Um, so what went wrong? So one, one thing is that uh, although you've been in school for more than a decade by the time you're in college, most students are never really taught how to learn. So uh, many of these recommendations that you'll see in the detailed slide set, they come from over 100 years of psychology, cognitive science, and, and neuroscience research about how we best learn. So um, the, there's a disconnect, right? So uh, cognitive psychologists, neuroscientists, and educators have been studying what are the most effective study techniques for, for decades, right? But unfortunately, um, there's a disconnect between what the, the, the academics are, are studying and, and what students are, are implementing, right? And so unfortunately, many of the, 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 the techniques that, um, sorry, many of the techniques that uh, the scientists, psychologists, neuroscientists, uh, find that are most effective are, are absolutely not being utilized by students, All right? So um, the, the structure today will just I'll highlight a few of the, the, the common myths that I see, and I'll touch upon a few of the techniques, but again, um, and then I hope to have, uh, please do, um, I, I hope for this to be very interactive and for this to be a good discussion, because um, that, that is another learning principle. If if, if this is just a lecture, you won't learn, right? That's, I have to be, you know, uh, uh, try to utilize our principles of learning uh, even in this, in this session. So interact, the more you interact, the more you engage, um, the more you'll take away. All right, so the first myth, how, how many people, and just put it in, in, you can just put it in your chat, how, how many people feel like they already know how to learn? Just uh, give, uh, you can just write, um, you know, I, I, feel, uh, I feel like I know how to learn uh, pretty well or not well, or I actually let's put it on a, on a, 10, on a, a 10 point scale, right? From 10 being, um, I'm pretty confident that I know how to learn and one being, uh, I, I don't know anything about learning. I'll give you just a few seconds to do that. All right, so this is myth one, number one, and we'll just touch on why I say it's a myth. And again, as a scientist, I, you know, I, 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 like, I like data, right? And so I don't like to tell if I take my, my duty as a, as, an, as, a, as a scientist, as an educator, as a mentor very seriously. So I don't like to give students random tips, but you know, it's either something that I've you know, learned um, in, in my own teaching or there's um, a more often than not, there's some data to back it up, All right? So, uh, the reason I would say that, that it's a myth that students know how to learn is that on average, only 13% of students polled use the scientist recommended study strategy, right? So nearly 90% of students are doing uh, things that uh, are not highly effective. All right. So this goes to uh, some of our earlier conversations, right? Um, when you say uh, students are here, here's here's a fact, and I'm sorry, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hard fact to swallow, but it it is, and it just it just sucks, but it is, and and I was certainly guilty of it. Students really suck at predicting their grades, right? So um, I, I was I was terrible at predicting my grades, and most students just are. Right, and so um, this study, um, this study looked at uh, took took a group of of undergraduates, and uh, more than sixty percent of them, when they asked, what, you know, at the beginning of the class, what, you know, how 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 well do you think you're going to do? More than sixty percent of students predicted they would get an A, an a in their biology class. What's reality? Is that less than fifteen percent of the students actually received an A? Right, and so. Um, around uh, the B is a little bit, there's not as, as, um, as big a, a uh, difference, but you know, nobody, um, 
the difference between those students that predicted they would get a C in their actual grade, right? And nobody's predicting that they're going to fail the class, right? But students actually do, right? And so, um, you know, this big discrepancy here, and I, uh, Brian, can you tell me, are you able to see my pointer? I, I can see your mouse. So oh, is mouse. that, okay. yep. Yep. Okay. We're following you. So, so this 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 change, right? This is you know reality versus sort of the the illusion, right? So this discrepancy shows that you know students are really bad at predicting their grade, right? So does this resonate with anybody? I know when we asked uh, when I asked before one of the the nice examples I got, you know, the, our recent examples of you know this morning and, and last night, where you know say, well, you know, I thought I was going to do really well, right? Well. Uh, hopefully you'll see that this, it's not just you, you know, most students suck at predicting this, right? Um, so what strategy do you think students use the most to study? All right, so what this, what this shows and is meant to, to illustrate and, and I think does very effectively is that uh, one of the, the, the strategies that students use more often is rereading. That means that if they, if if you don't understand something, you just open the text. You you uh, took out your your biology book and you you read chapter two and you don't quite understand it. So what's the solution? Well, let me read it again. Right? Does anybody uh, raise your hand if if you've done that? Well, I used to do it all the time. Right? I can't see everybody, but go ahead, raise your hand if you've done that, right? So uh, even though studies show that rereading is not um, effective, uh, students use this strategy twice as much as practice problems, right? And so uh, rereading, re you know, really sucks, right? So um, this is uh, some of the, the cognitive psychologists that study this. and. Uh, this is their quote. So rereading is a terribly ineffective strategy. The best strategy by far is to self-test, which is the ninth most popular strategy, right? So whereas self-testing, right, is actually one of the most effective ways, it's, it's very rare that, that students actually self-test, okay? And so, uh, and rereading is actually the number one um, uh, stu student study strategy, and it and it's it's a horrible strategy, right? So that that's myth number one. So we um, students are really bad at predicting their grades. All of us are, um, uh, and uh, students use strategies that are not effective, right? And you can again, you can uh, dive in deeper if you want to see more on those polls and the, with your pre reads, right? Uh, another myth I see, because um, I work with a lot of students that are preparing either for graduate school or professional school, is that they're not doing so hot in their courses and they try to um, say, well, you know what, I, I, you know, and they, and they do a whole bunch of extracurriculars and they're volunteering or they're doing research and all, all that stuff is great, but it doesn't replace being uh, academically strong and being able to do the work. It's stuff that should be in addition to, not in place of uh, a strong academic performance. And so this, this just shows, um, you know, how uh, when, when we ask the deans of a variety of me medical schools, you know, what, what's most important to, you know, the sci science and math GPA was, um, ranks much higher than things like community service and, and other things. So don't try to, and this is, you know, you get a similar thing for, you know, graduate schools and other professional schools. So if you're struggling in your courses, don't try to uh, just say, hey, okay, um, I just suck it at these classes. So I'm going to try to go out and, and do something else. It, it's great to do other things. It's great to have research experience. It's great to do community service. But those things are in addition to strong academic performance. Um, another myth, so that, that's myth number two. So another myth is that um, some students just say, hey, you know, just kind of give up and say, you know what, you know, I'm just, I'm just not uh, that, that smart. I'm just not smart enough. I can't cut this, right? And, um, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Angela Duckworth is uh, a, a noted um, psychologist at, at Princeton has done a, really a lot of groundbreaking 
uh, research. And, and one of the things that she focuses on is, is, is grit. And um, that this is a, one of the questions that she, that's driven her throughout her career is, you know, what are the determinants of success? And, you know, this is one of her, and she's worked here with one of the other, um, another very um, noted psychologist, uh, esteemed psychologist at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, Martin Slegman. And uh, a lot of her work, and I'll just summarize here, you know, much of her, her work has shown that, um, you know, I, 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 that uh, self-discipline and, uh, um, and, and, and grit and, and your work ethic and things like that um, outdoes IQ in predicting academic performance. Not just this study is in adolescence, but she's done similar studies at you know colleges and universities, at West Point, and at uh, in, in graduate and medical schools. And you know, generally speaking, and if I had to sum, sum this up, what she finds it's that um, hard work, uh, that, that hard work um, uh, beats. Uh, IQ uh, um, in, in most cases, right? Um, it, it can, you know, it's great to be smart. It's, it's great to have a high IQ, but the best combination is that plus hard work. And so um, th this is a, another, again, data-driven uh, point of, uh, in, in many cases, you're, the determinants of success and predictors of su success have more to do with what you do than what you were born with. Um, myth number four, um, how much I study doesn't matter. And so here again, um, uh, just briefly, you know, I, I think this is probably intuitive for most people, that most people, you gotta put the work in, right? So uh, individuals that put, have put more time in, um, met substantially overperformed or met their expectations compared to those that put in uh, less time and, and work, right? So at this time, maybe it's, um, you know, in sort of respecting uh, the brain principles, I know by this time, um, you know, one of the questions I heard earlier was how long, when, when to take breaks, right? Generally speaking, you know, within an hour, you know, you, you, unless you're, sometimes you're vibing and you're just like, you know, you're good, you're, you're, um, and, and you're, you're okay, but you know, pay attention to how you feel. You know, for most people, typically, you know, within an hour, they need to, you know, get up, stretch, take a, a break, and your your brain can't typically, uh, you know, unless you're very interested in the material or you make the material the material interesting. You know, um, you have to respect that your brain typically can't sustain attention um, uh, for for you know very demanding tasks that may not be that that could be boring you know for extended periods of time so um with respecting that and 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 you know most I, I think a lot of coursework kind of falls into into that category even when it is stuff you're interested in so uh brian is this a, a good time to kind of see where see where we're at and see what what students are thinking if there are any questions yeah there is a, there's a a question that just says right now how long of a break should there be in your studying? So, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, 10, you know, 10 minutes or so, I, I think there's no, you know, kind of hard and fast rules, you know, I, I, but, you know, I, I think, you know, a 10, 15 minute break, stretch, um, stretch your legs, go out and get some fresh air, you know, take a, a brief walk. Yeah, and, and the other thing is every, everybody's different, right? But, you know, you should listen to yourself. If you, you should listen to your body, you know, in, in general, you know, most people can't go for, for you know, hours on end without taking a break, you'll start to lose. Um, you'll you'll start to find yourself um, uh, losing the the information and not retaining anything. And so, um, it's just you're at the point of diminishing return. So, you know, I, I say if the if the material is very challenging, you know, I, I'd say you know in an hour, you know, uh, you know five five ten minutes, right? But everybody's a little bit different, but. Um, you know, I think within an hour, two hours. Now, sometimes you're in the zone, right? And if you're in the zone, like you know it, you've got the energy, you're really into the stuff, don't, don't necessarily break that up, right? But listen to yourself, you know, listen to how you're, you're feeling and, and your mood and, and things like that. So um, if you're not feeling one way or another, I say, you know, within, a, within an hour, take a, you know, a five, 10 minute break, come back to it, uh, go again hard. 
Um, but you know, if you're in the zone and you feel like, Hey, I can keep going, then don't break that up. Just, just because you want to, you know, follow, follow this rule. Does that make sense? There was another question in here. Um, it says how many hours of studying, um, for a student with ADHD? Um, uh, that's, that's, that's a great question. Again, there's no hard and, and, and fast rule. So I, you know, I actually, um, have a, a pretty significant, um, uh, learning, uh, disability. And, um, so I know that it takes me a lot longer and, and, you know, I, I had this, you know, I struggled with it all, all throughout graduate school. Um, and, uh, and so I know that it takes me longer to, um, process information and retain information. So I know that I typically end up studying sometimes uh, uh, twice as much as 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 my peers, right? So, um, you know, I just, you know, I just had the philosophy of, you know, kind of doing what it takes. So there's no hard and fast um, number. Um, I would say for a particular, uh, if you're struggling with, with ADHD, but there are some uh, other strategies that you can employ to make sure that your studying is much more efficient and you're not dis distracted. There are things that you can do if you require accommodations, make sure you get those accommodations. If you require to be in a quiet place without distractions, make sure that you're, you're um, in a quiet place without, without distractions. Um, mm -hmm. If, uh, you know, you're really, really listening and knowing yourself and what makes you feel able to focus and what what makes you distracted um, and and as well a lot of the the approaches and techniques that we talk about you know apply you know very well to individuals with uh, learning disorders whether it be ADHD or other um, disorders processing like uh, mine as well um, I can't give you I you know I can't give you a a, a um, uh, a, a hard and fast number, um, but it should go, it should be data driven, right? So um, if you're not able to, and so when I say data driven, that means if you're not getting the grades that you think you're capable of, if you're studying and um, you're still not, you're not doing well in courses, the data, that data is telling you that you're not using the most efficient uh, strategies. Any other questions? Yeah, there was actually one more question there that said, can you address locations and maybe times of day that are best for uh, studying? Okay, so this, this there's, um, those are probably not the biggest factors. I would say that there are some things that are, that are more personal preference. Um, and uh, there are some things that uh, also, um, for example, um, I'm, I'm a night owl. Like I, I can get started like midnight. Like that's, that can be like my prime time. So all throughout grad school, like I would pull all nighters that, and that, and that was like easy for me. Then that's like my prime time. But um, for other people, they, you know, they're diurnal rhythms, they're, they're morning people. And so uh, it's really, really should be based on when do you have the most energy? Okay, and so if you're a night person, whether you're a morning person or a midday person, um, you should try to do your, your toughest cognitive tasks when you have the most uh, energy. Okay, so, you know, within, and I'll, I'll try to, um, so one of the key things you'll get across is that um, here the advice from the experts is uh, really about um, questions. Testing yourself on questions is one of the key uh, things that you'll want to do is to question as and and make up your own test and to not use test as something that you are um, necessarily one thing that you're working towards, but use test every day, quiz yourself every day. And that act of retrieval, right? So retrieval practice is a learning strategy where we focus on getting information out through the act of retrieval or calling information to mind our memory. Uh, uh, for this information is strengthened, right? So this is one of the key things, this key strategies you'll find in this um, set, right? And so as opposed to rereading, um, retrieval practice has been shown by near, more than uh, 100, nearly 100 years of research has demonstrated the superiority of retrieval practice. 
right? So how can you engage in retrieval practice, uh, flashcards, things like uh, Quizlet, putting your information in, um, in, in there, not just right before an exam, but, but every day uh, asking yourself these questions, right? So the more questions, I, I, I would make a bold um, statement based on all the research, which is that your grade is going to be, uh, in most, most courses, is going to be almost linear with the number of practice problems and questions that you do, right? For uh, courses that are more quantitative, um, for courses like organic, you got, you got to do reactions, reactions over and over and over and over again. Going back and rereading um, is, is way less effective than uh, retrieval practice and, uh, and, and testing yourself. So one of the, the things I, I suggest is a blank paper challenge, and you can do that right now, right? So what would a blank paper challenge look like? So take out a piece of paper right now, or you can do it in the chat, right? And um, jot down everything that you've learned so far. I'll give you 30 seconds to do that. So this is, this is a good test, right, of, um, of what you've actually learned. After you've read a chapter or study, take out a blank piece of paper and see how much of it you can just retrieve and just write it down. After you can't remember anymore, compare what you wrote to what's in, in your notes or in, in the book. You know, what did you miss? What did you get wrong? What did you get right? Okay, so there's a lot of ways. Um, there's uh, four ways I've highlighted here that you can uh, retrieve a practice. Right, you can do this blank paper challenge. You can, and I would actually, I would recommend you do all of these things. Um, I, I wouldn't just choose one, but the more of these you do, the better, right? You can use uh, electronic flashcards like uh, Anki or Quizlet, um, do the blank paper challenge. Uh, three, teaching is an awesome way to, for retrieval practice. Um, for make up your own quiz or test and share with a partner. If you got a colleague in a in a class, ask them to make up a test and, and you share it. And again, these are these are proven ways um, the, uh, to to improve your studying. So um, this, in the interest of time, I'll try to speed through some of these. But um, uh, cramming versus spaced retrieval. So this study showed here are students that initially the students crammed um, and the dark blue is the, the mass retrieval or what we know as cramming. And initially um, students learn better like, like immediately after they learned the material. But if you ask them 10 minutes later or a couple of days later, right, spaced retrieval was much more effective than cramming. Okay? So one of the things you'll see in there is, um, is I recommend essentially studying from, for the exam from day one and, and at a minimum starting 10 days before the exam and not like three days or one day or two days like most people so, um, usually do. Right, here's another study that looked at uh, what do students do, uh, how, how well do students do when they compare um, uh, testing themselves to um, rereading, right? And, and the gray bar is how they perform when they, um, when, when they uh, test themselves versus the uh, dark blue bars when they just reread. Again, much better performance with, uh, with testing themselves. There's another one that's showing again that, um, that actually when students are uh, are, are actually not, not only we talked about how they don't predict well their grades, but actually um, it, it feels better to reread than to test, right? So students actually predicted that rereading would result in stronger grades than, um, than, it, than it did, right? And actually they, they felt more uncomfortable doing um, the, the testing even though it resulted in, in uh, a better performance. So final performance, so this SRRR, is, um, is the uh, more frequent testing. And um, this is, they 
uh, performed better than the students that just reread. But uh, as far as the, their judgments, they thought that they would do worse, okay? So I'll, I'll let you look to the Ebbing House for um, uh, the forgetting curve, but that's an important principle as well. Um, we talk about illusions of competence um, and retrieval practice and metacognition is an antidote for that. Um, also in here is in interacting with professors, uh, preparing for an exam or quiz, right? And um, I'll highlight just a few more uh, areas uh, one is uh, aiming for deep learning. So here's one of the things that we, we often see, right? And, and students, uh, uh, this is Bloom's taxonomy. And one of the, the big reasons students don't do well is that oftentimes that stu uh, professors are looking for a higher level of, of understanding. They're wanting students to evaluate and synthesize material and students are really just using more superficial methods right, um, they're, they're at this sort of high school or, or early undergraduate levels when um, professors are wanting them to evaluate or synthesize and use higher, higher level thinking. Um, so it's, it's important to, to understand those levels. Um, finally, the, one of the, another big mistake is confusing recognition of, and, and knowledge. Uh, how many recognize what's on the left? All right, what, what is it? I'm getting a few responses in the chat feature. All right, can, can I get a, can I have a volunteer to, um, uh, to describe what's on the left? All right, I have uh, Shauna or Irma. It is Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity. Yes, and another question would be, so, how, so many people recognize this, but how many people can actually derive it? Right, so that's a very different situation, right? So the number of people that would recognize it would be very different than the number of people that could actually derive it, right? So that's, that's a, uh, a, a, one of the, the many things that I see that students uh, confuse, right? They may, as they're preparing for exams, they may say, oh yeah, I've, I've studied this and they confuse the recognition with that actual knowledge. All right, so um, I, again, I wanna, I wanna make sure, so all of these things have been, um, are, are outlined and uh, I'll take this time for uh, questions or, um, or additional uh, comments, uh, just so I wanna make sure that I address, um, m much of this is, is um, addressed in the, uh, in the pre-reads, right? But to summarize is space out your learning, um, studying a little bit every day rather than cramming in one long session. Uh, start uh, studying early, um, uh, read before class, review lecture notes, um, learn more by testing yourself. This is a retrieval practice, right? So you got four methods of retrieval practice. Um, be an active reader, right? So you don't, you can't read a book like you would read a novel. Right, so you wanna make sure that you're using active techniques and not passive techniques, um, be an active reader. Um, and again, uh, uh, these are our strategies and, and, and techniques. Make sure you're taking those breaks as we, we discussed, okay? So there are a lot of differences between uh, students that perform well and, and don't. The A students are preparing for exams every day through their daily habits. Um, they know it's important to check in regularly with their professors. Uh, they test themselves frequently. Um, C students, they don't think about exams until the week. 
of the exam and think cramming works. Um, they're shallow learners. So um, these are just some, some of the things, these again, these are teasers. So um, the, the first concept, metacognition, all right. Um, so we talked and we'll, you can go into detail about metacognition. Uh, retrieval practice, right? So you, you, we've got a number of ways we can practice retrieval practice. Uh, timing, right? So you should be trying to retrieve. Um, timing is very important. So uh, usually the day of, after you've had a lecture, um, try to retrieve that that um, and study that material within 24 hours. Um, after lecture, review your notes within 12 hours. Start preparing at least 10 days in, in advance for tests. So 24, 12, 10. All right. So, and this is kind of a summary of, of, of everything. And um, with that, I'll, I'll, I'll take any questions. And so again, you know, I want to emphasize that this was really just a, a, a teaser. Um, and because uh, there's so much content and so much material that we could actually, if we content wise, we could probably spend a few days um, going through uh, all of these strategies. But um, hopefully you got a sense of what's in, in those, those pre-reads and um, what some of the students are, are doing that are, that are uh, ineffective strategies, what some of the most effective strategies are. And um, I'll, I'll open for, for questions then. So let's see, do we have any questions? Um, if you'd like to, you don't have to type them in the Q&A. If you'd like to take your phone off mute uh, or use the raise your hand feature. I'm not sure. Adrian, you had your hand up. I'm not sure if that was for the previous one. If not, uh, Alex. Hi there. Um, so, um, I'm a junior right now and, um, throughout my time or, you know, throughout my college experience, I've kind of developed some, you know, just kind of a study routine that I've taken, mm -hmm. um, pretty well for all of my courses. Um, but now this semester I'm taking organic chemistry mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, it's definitely, you know, my, my strategies that I've always used aren't, aren't really cutting it for this course. So, um, you know, I know you had mentioned that, you know, organic chemistry is just one of those courses that are just, you know, different than others, but do you have any, um, you know, tips or, you know, that I could kind of, you know, tweak my study methods to, you know, just really, I'm just really not sure how, how to learn in this class is, that's my main issue. It, it, it is, it is quite, it is reactions, doing reactions over and, and over again. That'll get you the most bang for your buck, right? You know, read, you know, read, read the book to get the, the basics, but um, you, you know, I would literally sit there with um, a piece of paper and a pen and write out reactions, fill up a paper, a, a page with it. And then, then what I would do with it is I would, crumple that paper up, throw it in the trash, and start over again until I nearly fill, fill the trash bag with um, crumpled up pieces of paper with the reactions on it. Um, the, you know, of course, like, you know, read, read the chapter to, to, to know what you're doing, but um, there's, you know, at, at, it's complicated and it's simple, right? Students are, there, there's no magic bullet Right, that's one thing I can tell you. Um, there's no magic bullet. The, the things that you need to do, the strategies are, are fairly straightforward, but just like there's a big difference between uh, recognition and knowledge, there's a big difference between um, recognition and implementation, right? So you might, you might hear me say, you know, do problems over and over again, but you know it's not the same as doing them if um, unless you actually do them and implement the strategies you know they they won't work so if if i had to say one strategy for for organic it's do problems do problems till you can't see straight and there's there's no there's no getting around that 
Don't try to replace it with rereading. Don't try to replace it. Do problems. Okay, I really do appreciate that. That's uh, definitely uh, this, you know, we just took our first exam and um, I was definitely more focused on rereading the material, but mm. I'm going to start uh, for this next exam. I'm going to start, mm. like you're saying, just start doing more uh, practice problems. And mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and um, yeah, I'd love to hear how things go. But if you can, um, you know, like I said, fill up, fill up a trash can with, uh, uh, with, um, with, with uh, crumpled up pieces of paper with those reactions that you've done. All right, I will transition to a question in the Q&A feature. Uh, can you implement these strategies in group study? Is group study an effective practice anyway? And if so, how can students organize themselves effectively in a remote setting? How can, so I think one principle, so absolutely yes. Um, uh, groups, group studying is, is really important and I, I'm a big advocate of it, but it doesn't replace doing, um, doing a lot of the work on your, on your own, right? So, you know, the, probably one of the most effective strategies within group studying is, is, t is teaching, is teaching each other, right? So your ability to um, try to explain the concept to uh, your peers or the individuals in your group, right? So, you know, everybody, you know, what typically tends to happen is that is people fall back on, on recognition. No, you, you don't know it, you're recognizing things. So when someone, when you're working on something and someone tells you the answer and you say, oh yeah, it's not knowledge, it's recognition, right? And, and students that just don't get that distinction. Um, what what teaching back requires knowledge, right? And and so you know an important part of that group. So yes, the, the answer is yes. These strategies work with um, group learning. Group learning is very important, um, but you know one a critical part of that group learning is is teaching. So make sure that if you're in a group, um, you're you're in a group with, um, uh, with with individuals that are both that are a, a diverse group. You know you don't want to be, you know, you want individuals that are stronger than you or doing better than you that you can ask the questions and that can help you. Um, but you also want, want, to, want an opportunity to teach yourself. You don't always want to be on the receiving end. So that's where the diversity in your group come, comes in. Here's some more in the Q&A feature. Um, is there any way to improve my time management skills? I'll, I have troubles planning ahead, planning ahead uh, of time to study because I can get distracted easily. Um, I will say before you answer that, we do have, and maybe Deb, you can um, even post a link to our uh, sessions from the summer, but this was uh, one of the sessions. I think um, Dr. Ruiz did a wonderful job um, this summer of presenting on this. So there is more content, um, but I will uh, turn it over um, to the good doctor here uh, to provide us uh, his thoughts on the time management side of things. Yeah, so I, I think that it's important. I'm showing a, a couple slides here. So this is that meta, metacognition piece where um, it's important thinking about thinking, right? And so if you have a strategy, one of the one of the antidotes to distraction and to um, time management is one of the, the biggest issues is that people are, students are typically, are kind of random. You know, you randomly pop, you know, uh, pop open a, a, a book, you know, your selection of, su of subject is random, the time is random, um, you don't have a plan, right? And so this, this makes it very easy for your, your time to get away from you. So, you know, this principle of metacognition is, is uh, one of the antidotes to that one is organize and plan your, stu your studying and making sure you have learning goals. Uh, sitting down with an actual timer. So you take your piece of paper, you know, this is the study, this is the, the course that I'm, I'm studying. Here are my learning goals for the next hour, right? And um, reflecting on what you learned, 
Um, and this this slide will probably will maybe you know helpful to you um, in in uh, planning, right? So you survey the chapter. So if you have a strategy, right, and you're not randomly going through the book, that's one of the antidotes to um, time management. Time man your your time gets away from you because you don't have a strategy and because you don't have a plan. Um, typically, I, and, and when I say you, I don't mean me. I mean in the in the general sense. Is that that's one of the common reasons that um, when people say you know time management, it's because they don't have a plan, they don't have a purpose, and they're not organized, right? So you can follow these strategies um, for planning and organizing your studying. Um, there, this talks about you know pre-reading and and having a having a game plan, right? So daily habits, trying to study at least an hour a day, study partner, right? So when you have a strategy and you have a timer and, and it's organized and you know what you're, you're doing, you've taken the, the um, questions in the chapter, you've taken the, the chapter headings and turned them into questions, then you're actually studying with a purpose. Right? You should always have a purpose. You're trying to, and, and your, your brain respects purpose. Your brain respects a question. It's if if you if you've ever compared you know how you uh, operate when you're trying to find an answer to something you know versus just you know kind of moving along and, and going through the motions uh, when when you have a, a purpose it it makes a whole um, a very big difference in your attention in in your efficiency and in um, in in the retention of that that information. So short answer, have a purpose, have a plan for your studying. Don't just sit down and randomly pop open a book and, and start randomly looking through notes. Thank you. All right, another question we had is, doing another activity such as light walking uh, detrimental towards studying efficiency? You mean during studying or as, yeah. during, as, as a break? I, I would assume that means during study. During, um, you know, I, I think that you can. No, no, not not necessarily. Now, you know, if you're, so there are a lot of ways. You know, a lot of students. Um, this, uh, a lot of my, um, the students that are studying for boards will. You know, they they have a lot of. Um, of uh, audio um, lectures and, and things that they'll use, they'll listen to while they're exercising. So that that should be that that can certainly be an important um, supplement, right? Um, so you you know you certainly need to have your sit down and um, just uh, go toe to toe with the book. You'll you'll have to have that time. But uh, another, it, it certainly would be worthwhile to find other ways of, of practicing and rehearsing material. Um, and if it's, you know, taking a walk and listening to um, your, a lecture, you know, that's, that's great, but do some, try to do something with it. You know, after the walk, um, try to see if you do the, um, the blank paper, paper test challenge, right? So let's say you walk for, for 20 minutes, Right. When you're done, see if you can jot down it and um, retrieve everything that you that you heard. So, yes, as, as a supplement. Um, yes. But um, I don't think it's probably, you know, would be your primary method of learning, because at, at some point you'll have to sit down and do some problems and do some writing. And things. But I love it as a as a as a, a way to introduce variety um, into your learning. Okay, we do have a, a few more questions. Um, it says, um, I work in a warehouse job full time. Can I work while studying or does it impair that? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, Can you tell, tell so me basically, more about that? So basically they're saying they're, they may have a job where mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to study while mm -hmm. Uh, doing work mm -hmm. uh, and basically is there um, is that impairing the quality of the studying uh, if you're doing it while working no I mean uh, you know similar to the previous answer I, I think that having a variety in your in your studying is 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 
can be positive. So for example, let's say, so many of these, um, uh, like the, their electronic notes like Study Blue and Quizlet, they are Anki. Um, you can have them on their on your phone. So uh, I, I, you know, I have students that will, you know, spend uh, several hours putting the information into the into the programs, into the electronic um, flashcards um, when they when they're not working or when they do have time to sit down. And then if they're on the bus or exercising or as uh, for this example walking or, or for this example you know working in the warehouse then they go through those um, they do their retrieval practice you know um, while they're doing other things right so yes if you have a break um, and you want to and you want to do your flashcards on your break absolutely um, again you know it's one of balance right if if that's the only time that you have to study is while you're while you're there it might be a, a bit more challenging but you know the, these are things you can work on your powers of focus work on your powers of um of of blocking out distractions um and and i like the idea of taking advantage of of um of downtime to uh rehearse and and practice retrieval um, you just have to be careful about, you know, is, is that your, your only method? Because at, at some point you, you probably need that quiet, focused downtime without any other distractions. Um, so as long as you're still getting some of that focus time, then, then yes, um, uh, doing some, some studying while you're at work or um, while you're exercising is, is great. All right, and we'll go with one more here. It says, um, what are some ways that we can interact with the text when reading? Are there any question examples that we should be asking ourselves uh, as we read? Yes, uh, great, great question. Um, let me see if I, uh, that's, that's a, a great question. So the answer is a, a resounding yes you do you should be interacting with that text you should be interacting with that and if you if you have done the work if you have done this right so you start by surveying the chapter look at the figures illustrations and headings you know you read the textbook headings and turn them into into questions and then try to uh, answer the questions as you read so again this all goes back to do you have a strategy and, and are you reading and studying with a purpose and typically that purpose is answering these questions. And now you may generate, now the questions can come from, uh, for example, um, like let's say it's, you know, intro biology, right? So, you know, it's uh, a photosynthesis chapter, you know, so what, what do you do? You say, okay, what your first question is, what is photosynthesis? Or, you know, what are the steps in photosynthesis, right? You turn that chapter heading, um, into a question and so it brings a purpose to your reading and not just something that you're doing randomly but uh, you know the 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 main answer is is absolutely you should be interacting with that text and you should be answering questions either questions that are generated by the book or they could be questions that you come up with just because you're you're interested in in, in the topic um, and so, uh, yes, there, there are, there are you should absolutely be having a lot of interaction with, um, with, with the text. Um, highlighting is not, is not particularly effective. Um, you'll see in one of, in the strategies that highlighting is, is one of the, you know, typically one of the worst um, strategies uh, students use. Um, so uh, highlighting is here. Right, and and most studies show that this is not a very um, uh, effective um, uh, effective method. Right, um, so so be careful about just randomly highlighting things, but writing notes, writing questions. Like if you if you have a text that you can actually write in, um, when you see something that you don't understand, writing questions to yourself that you actually come back and answer. Um, making links between things, right? If if it's a, if it's uh, something that you can actually write in, there's writing in the margins, uh, making asking uh, yourself questions, uh, making links between different concepts, uh, applying it to what you know um, already, um, something that you've heard on the news. These are all great ways of of interacting with the task text.
All right. There was one more that I would like to go with. It says, what are, um, I guess, oh, actually, let's go with this one. This one's here early. I apologize. Is testing with a person more effective than testing with yourself? Um, no, I, I don't. I don't think it's it's one or the the other. Um, the the main the main point is really just: Are you retrieving that information? Are you forcing your brain to try to find? that information so it's no longer something that you what, what testing does is it moves things from the realm, realm of recognition to forcing you to have knowledge of it right um, and so whether or not the other person comes up with the questions or whether you come up with the questions um, I, I actually prefer a both right I, I think that because testing is probably the main thing that you should be doing um, as far as studying testing yourself um, I, I think it's very feasible to do both. Like in your day to day, you're probably not going to be studying with someone every day. So in your day to day, um, after you read a, a chapter, um, test. Uh, after you you read a subsection, test, quiz, retrieval practice, right? Do that, and then you know the once or maybe twice. Um, I, I think you'll probably be doing group work less frequently you know one easy thing you can do is if you have a study partner say hey you know how about you make uh, I'll make up a test for you and you make up a test for me and you guys and you, you you guys exchange it you having to think of questions for your your partner um, is is retrieval practice it's a beautiful form of retrieval practice and then in addition to that you have to answer theirs and you've hit so many of these um, testing strategies and in one fell swoop, just by you coming up with the questions for your partner and, and then having to answer theirs um, is, is something I would highly recommend. But it's, it's, I don't think it's an either or. I think you can easily do both. All right, well, um, I think we'll uh, transition there. Um, what we'll do here is actually, I will share my screen. <laughs> Can you guys see my screen well? All right, so as we, as we close out tonight, one of the things that we wanted to do is quickly in the chat feature, if you could um, let us know one thing that you have learned tonight. I know earlier we asked what is one thing that you wanted to learn. Uh, could you please share with us in the chat feature, what is one thing that you did learn from tonight? It can be something big, it can become something small, but just what is just one thing? All right, we do have um, a few answers coming in uh, through the chat feature. Looks like test yourself has come through a couple times here. Thank you guys for your feedback. Awesome. So as you're doing that, what I like to do is also, just like we did over the summer is, is leave you with a few uh, reflection questions. Um, so number one is what if anything did you find the most surprising about how you thought you should study versus the best practices as described by Dr. Artifayu, Artifayu um, sorry. Uh, name two habits or strategies that students learn about during presentation that they plan to use and why. And then how and when do you plan to implement these new habits or strategies? So I know this isn't a formal, formal homework assignment, but if you guys would like to capture these questions, and really go back and challenge yourselves uh, because we we put these questions on here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, for you to be better, for you to go and say, you know what, I received some information, but let me do some form of application uh, to the information that's been provided. All right, we'll skip over me today. Uh, let's go to collaborators. Just wanted to say thank you guys once again to all of the different LSAMP um, 
partnerships that we have and organizations that have come together to make uh, these um, learning sessions uh, available to us. So we had a wonderful summer and now we're transitioning uh, to our fall speaker series. So uh, we do have some upcoming sessions. We do uh, ask you guys to all participate. Uh, we have undergrad students, we have grad students, et cetera, uh, who will be supporting us. So next uh, week we'll be doing Get a Job. Uh, I know that sounds very simplistic, but it's very important. And the reason that we're doing it is that these are interesting time and there are some, some unique uh, strategies and unique challenges that we're facing in the process of getting these jobs. Uh, interns, uh, internships, find and apply. And I really love that we're doing this in October because as a person um, that teaches on the subject of internships, I will tell you this, we like to get interns in the fall. Many people don't know that. Uh, many organizations actually want to secure interns uh, in the fall. So I'm happy we're doing that early uh, here in the fall season. Uh, LinkedIn and resumes on November 18th and ask a grad student uh, open discussion uh, on December 2nd. So we really hope uh, to hear from you guys uh, for the rest of the semester. I think we had a wonderful summer. We had a great start tonight um, to our first fall session. So um, family, if we, if we can do it like we always do, just show some appreciation in our chat feature uh, for Dr. Artifayu. Uh, we really appreciate uh, everything uh, that you did for us tonight, the preparation that you did, the content was amazing, the delivery amazing. Um, so students, if you'd like to, uh, please share in the chat feature your feedback on tonight's session. And I would like to take one or two students, um, if you use your raise your hand feature, I like to do uh, just a little bit of feedback from tonight's session, or oh, maybe something you learned if this is very beneficial to you. If you'd like to uh, share, you could just take your phone off mute um, and use the raise your hand feature. All right, give me one second here, trying to find that. Emmanuel, um, Emmanuel, are you there? Yes, I am. The floor is yours, my man. All right. So I'd say something that was really beneficial to hear for me was that uh, self-discipline self -disciplining does uh, outdo IQ in many cases, and especially being uh, underrepresented minorities and having less resources compared to a lot of other individuals who have been in the game for a long time, uh, our hard work can outdo their uh, natural born ability. Awesome. So do you, do you think there that in the, the things that you learn, can you cascade that maybe to some of your, your peers? Uh, are there anything, you know, you feel like you want to share with them? So I would say the uh, keys to success that I found that I would kind of relate to them are that uh, spacing out your studying, uh, studying materials early, uh, doing pre-lecture notes, self-testing, and being an active learner and active reader are things that will be your keys to success when it comes to studying. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, like we normally do, we have our guest speaker kind of send us out. So, uh-oh, is that Shauna? Shauna likes to share some feedback to you before you close out uh, tonight. I really appreciated the piece about planning your studying time because I have a lot of issues with time management and actually completing the things that I said that I would do. Um, and I think that if I plan them out more specifically, it will help now that you say it. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for that feedback. Well, thank, thank you all. This is, this is a great and fantastic group. Um, I, you know, I would just, uh, you know, I, again, I do this because I've just seen so, so much incredible talent and I hate to, to see it, um, you know, uh, careers and, and wonderful contributions to STEM derailed. And so, you know, and I, I would encourage you all, I know some of these things seem pretty straightforward and, and simplistic, but that's the beauty in them all. And, and 
and don't be fooled by, you know, say, oh, well, you know, I've heard those things before. Again, like there's a difference between recognition and, and knowledge. There's a difference between recognition, knowledge, and implementation, right? So um, I, I would encourage you to try to, to implement these um, strategies. Feel free to, in, in the, the pre-reads is my contact information. Feel free to let me know if you've tried and how things are going or if you have further uh, questions. And I, I appreciate all the, the, the wonderful feedback and the comments. And the one quote I was trying to remember and I think was um, uh, brought to mind when the uh, student mentioned the hard work is that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, right? So, um, you know, I, I wish you all the best. I, you know, I, 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 I'm a, a big fan of, of uh, this, this group and um, the talent I've seen here is, is immense, is incredible. And I'm looking to hearing more about you all and, and seeing you guys do great things in, in STEM and um, being the best versions of, of yourself that you, that you can be. So uh, again, I, I would just, I would uh, challenge you, try it. Just, just try it. Some, some of these things may seem, oh, well, I've kind of heard of that, and oh, yeah, you know, but just, just tr give it a, an honest try and let me know how, how it goes, right? Um, I, I've just seen so, so many times where, you know, this has uh, turned uh, academic trajectories around, and, and I love seeing students succeed after, um, you know, not, not being the best versions of, of themselves. So, and even if you are doing great, you know, keep this in mind, you'll, the, the, the brain learns this way throughout your career and throughout your life, right? So thank you again for your time. I appreciate it. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Thomas and uh, Ms. Cole and, and uh, all of you great uh, students. And I, I hope to hear from, from some of you, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to share with you. Have a great night.